So welcome to Wanneroo Business Association's Meet the Nominees online pitching and Q&A session. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land from which we're hosting this online meeting today. And I would like to pay my respects to the Wajak people and the elders of the Noongar Nation past, present and emerging. My name is Elle and I'm the Membership and Events Coordinator at Wanneroo Business Association. Uh, we uh, have joining us today our President of the Wanneroo Business Association, Stephen Windsor. We also have uh, some other uh, volunteer existing board members with us today. And I would like to acknowledge uh, Neve from First Class Accounts Wanneroo. I would like to acknowledge Kasha Mishkowski. Uh, she is our vice president at the moment. And who else do we have here today? We have Andy. Andy as well, our secretary. Andy Kell from Therapy on Wheels is also with us here today, listening in. Um, have I missed anyone, Amy? No, I think that's everyone that's here today. I'd also like to acknowledge Amy, who is working diligently behind the scenes uh, muting and unmuting and spotlighting and unspotlighting people. So thank you, Amy. Uh, thank you to everyone for joining us today. Yeah, it's an opportunity to get to know uh, the members nominating for the WBA board 2023 to 2025. Uh, Stephen Windsor will uh, speak in a moment and he will explain the composition of the board going into the AGM. Um, but I would just first of all like to uh, explain the format of today's uh, uh, online session. Uh, we'll start with um, our pitching. So there'll be two minutes allocated to each one of our nominees. It is a very strict two minutes, so don't be offended if I interrupt you at the end. Um, Amy has a little uh, uh, buzzer that you might hear. Um, she will try not to press the buzzer that says boo. All right. So it will just be a little buzzer to let you know that that your time is up. Um, after we will be doing that in a alphabetical order, um, but it will be alphabetical on first name. And I think everyone knows that already. So, um, yeah, but if you are first, um, I know it's a bit nerve wracking, but at least you get it out of the way. OK. Um, also, after our pitching session, we'll be going into a Q&A session. So we'll have um, some questions um, posed by some of the other members of the meeting today. And um, our current board members uh, may also pose some questions. The Q&A feature is switched on. If you do have trouble with that feature and you've not used it before, we also do have the chat on. So however you feel comfortable, feel free to post your questions as you think of them um, throughout the, the pitching, whenever you like, and they will be chosen by Amy and myself at the end of the session. And we will pose the question to a small number of nominees. And another, you know, so you might not get asked every single question, um, but we will hopefully give everyone a chance to answer at least one question. Uh, so if anyone does have any issues, technical issues throughout, please, please feel free to jump in the chat and um, reach out and Amy or myself can help you. Um, so don't worry, we're here to make it easy for you today. Uh, what else? Um, oh, yes, yeah, so I think that's everything for now. I'd like to pass you over to Stephen Windsor, who's going to give you a little introduction and um, yes, yeah, some, some background on the board. Thank you, Stephen. Thank, thanks very much, uh, Elle and Amy, for making all of this possible. Um, as Even though Amy is hidden in the background, as Elle said, she is feverishly working away. So do bear with us. Um, uh, just in case there's one or two uh, glitches, but I'm sure they've got it all in hand. As Elle said, I am the president of the One Roo Business Association. But be today, before we hear from each of our members uh, nominating to join the committee of management of our wonderful uh, One Roo Business Association, I wanted to say a huge thanks to each and every one of you for putting yourselves uh, forward and for your support in general over the years. Um, you know, coming along to our events. Um, 
even even simply talking to people about the WBA and what we offer, um, you know, that sort of promotion is is golden to us, and that's how we attract new members. That's how we help new businesses survive. So um, the fact that I've seen all of you today out there promoting the WBA, that's absolutely fantastic. So, and even better to have you nominate to join our board. Now, this is the eighth consecutive year that we've received more nominations to join the committee of management than available positions. As Al mentioned before, yes, we've got eight nominations and five uh, positions. Now, this is uh, so healthy for uh, a not-for-profit organization to be able to attract volunteer board members of that level. Um, and it no doubt sets us up for uh, some great success as we move forward. Um, in regards to changes to, to the committee um, that need to be mentioned before the AGM uh, coming up on the 20th of July, I wanted to bring you up to speed on some of the changes. Um, we have um, our Vice President, Karsha Miskowski, um, who is um, sadly stepping down. Uh, Karsha joined the committee in 2019 as a board member and has served the last three years as our vice president and someone you cannot be president of an association like this without someone like Cassia um, um, having your back. So thank you so much to Cassia for everything that she's done for us over the years and especially uh, for me personally. Uh, our treasurer, treasurer even, Rebecca Turner is also stepping down. Uh, Rebecca joined the committee in 2021 as a board member and has served the last year as our treasurer. Um, a role that she really took and grabbed with both hands. And a lot of people believe that a treasurer needs to be an accountant. No, you don't. You just have to have um, a passion around the numbers, which um, obviously Rebecca definitely does have. Um, committee member Scott Ferguson will also be leaving us um, this year. And that, as I say, is um, all of the outgoing uh, committee members. But again, thank you so much to Scott uh, for stepping in um, after last year's AGM. Uh, the, I would also like to say an, another huge thank you to all the committee of um, management members for contributing your passion, time and championing the Wanneroo Business Association and you will get um, slightly better, thank you, at the upcoming AGM. Um, as per the WBA rules, office holders must, where possible, be nominated from existing committee of management members and are to be decided by the committee. Therefore, at the last committee meeting, the committee of management formally voted for the following people to fill the office holder roles. Myself, I will remain in the role of president. Um, Andy Kale uh, will step into the role of vice president, taken over from Cartier. Neve Campbell will take on the role of secretary, uh, taken over from um, from, An from Andy. Um, the role of treasurer will need to remain vacant until the first convened meeting of the new committee of management um, scheduled in August. Um, and I must say, uh, Russell, a thank you, to, um, personal thank you to Russell, Sumner and Agatha de Fonseca uh, for their work over the last year um, as committee members who will continue um, on the board moving forward. And back to Elle to get the pictures started. So good luck, everyone. Thank you, Stephen. OK, um, so we're going to move on now to hear from our nominees, which is what this session is for, after all. Um, nominees, I'm going to invite you uh, to introduce yourself to everybody and um, introduce your, your business. Um, and I'd like you to just share briefly your reasons for nominating um, for the WBA committee. Um, as we're to hear from eight of you, as I mentioned, we are going to be strict with the timings and you'll have two minutes each. Um, so we will interrupt when we get to that point. So in alphabetical order via first name, Alice. You are up first. So lovely, Alice. Yeah. Turn your mic on. OK, can everybody hear Alice OK? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, wonderful, Alice. All right, I will let you go. And um, yes, I will see you in two minutes. <laughs> OK. 
Hi. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the call today. I'm Alice. I'm a CPA and a certified financial modeling and valuation analyst with 13 years of experience in accounting and corporate finance. My business is called Cleverly Accounting. You probably can see it from the... Um, <laughs> So we specialize in virtual CLO services, financial modeling, and data visualization. We also offer traditional accounting services, such as bookkeeping, payroll, and buses. Our business are in Junalot, but we, Junalot, but we offer um, services to clients all across Australia. I have been a member of the WBI for uh, over two years now. And as it has been a fantastic experience, um, especially as someone who is very new to Perth. The WBA has given me a wonderful platform to connect with other um, business owners in the local areas. Um, throughout this group, I have formed uh, both professional relationships and friendship with other members. They have been incredibly um, welcoming and supportive to my business. Um, some people even referred uh, clients to our business. Um, so I'm really a strong advocate of the incredible work that the WBA has done for our local business community. So I would be very thrilled to be part of it. And I'm excited to bring my financial knowledge, um, experience my enthusiasm and passion for helping small businesses to the table. Um, this year, I put my name up for nomination because, you know, I hope to have the opportunity to give back to this amazing community. Um, however, even if I'm not selected, you know, I would still continue to support the WBI and its member um, in any way that I can. Um, if you have any questions for me, uh, please do ask, but don't ask me any difficult questions. <laughs> Three seconds to go, Alice. That was perfect. Oh. There All we right, go. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. OK, thank you very much, Alice. Um, next up, we have David. Let's make sure everybody can see and hear David. Say something. Something. <laughs> there we go. And David is spotlighted for everybody. So that's good. All right, David, are you ready to go? Yeah. All right, off you go. Okay, yes, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm David from Print Integrity. Um, we're a printing, promotional, and um, sort of like merchandising uh, business that's um, located in Wanneroo. We've been going for um, a few years now, and through those years, we've been part member of WBA, and um, we've risen from that small little um, terrified person that was going to start a business to being quite a thriving business. We provide products locally, interstate, and at times overseas. Um, we have had amazing support from the WBA, and our businesses, like I said, has grown. Our reputation has grown. We were lucky enough to be winners of the Business Award last year, um, which you know, it's a lot, fills us with a lot of pride. And that leads me to the reason why I have nominated for the board is over the journey, WBA has been amazing at supporting people, being there in the background, um, being the people that you can turn to when things get hard. Um, it understands, advocates and supports small business. And part of our policy and our business is to actually give back, not just take all the time. And you will find that we, you know, we support local community, we support local sporting groups and things like that. For me, I would, looking at joining the WBA, not for, you know, um, ticking off a box or adding something to my resume, it's purely to give back to this amazing organisation that has supported us over the journey. And um, through being a part of WBA, we've, you know, we've met some incredible people. We've got, you know, business and personal friendships um, through this. And um, I personally believe that to be part of that um, would be an honour and not just a tick in a box or, or whatever. And I think it comes with an, an amazing amount of responsibility. I think also that um, on the journey, I've also been lucky enough to be part of the marketing committee. And um, that to me demonstrates a- Okay, David, sorry, that's the end of your two minutes. Good. That was wonderful, <laughs> zip it. No, I'm not saying, in the nicest I'm, possible way. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure you could talk all morning. <laughs> no, we all <laughs> I'm sure we all could. 
Um, thank you so much, David. OK, the next person um, who we're going to hear from today is George. George, can we just make sure that your mic is on and we can hear you OK? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Excellent. OK, and George is spotlighted for everybody. OK, George, are you ready to go? I am ready to go. Thank you. All right. Two minutes. OK, good morning, everybody, and best of luck to all the other nominees. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know me, my name is George Cortesis and I'm from Applied Security Force. Now, I don't have some fantastic convincing statement to persuade your votes, uh, but what I can tell you is that I wouldn't be nominating as a board member today had I not met the likes of Stephen Windsor, Michelle Corbett and several other pivotal uh, people along my journey with the Wanneroo Business Association. One of the most significant things that my peers have shown me is the importance of supportive collaboration and creating value for other people. Therefore, my reason for stepping forward today is to take my place and ensure that this legacy continues on into the future. And this is why you should vote for me. Back to you, Elle. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, George. That was wonderful. Short and to the point. I love it. <laughs> OK, um, the next person we're going to hear from today is Kate. So Kate, if you could uh, turn your mic on. Can you Lovely. hear me? We can hear you fine and you are spotlighted for everybody as well. And Kate, you can start whenever you're ready. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. And a special thanks to Elle and Amy for having us and hosting us here. And spotlighting us and doing all that stuff in the background. I'm Kate, I'm from Kate Keeley Designs. It's in the name. <laughs> um, so I specialize in, I'm a web and graphic designer, but I specialize in web design. And my family, right back to my grandparents, have always owned and ran small businesses. So I'm doing the same. For the past two years, I've been a part of WBA and it's been an amazing thing. I've had lots of friends, collaborators and clients from WBA and WBA has grown my business but also me as a person so I'm very very thankful for them. But the reason why I want to run for the board is I'm a relatively young woman working in the tech industry, creating websites, working with technology with business and I think that that in this new era of business is something that I can help benefit with people giving advice and letting them know about how that works with their business. Of course, if I wasn't on the board, I would still be doing that. So <laughs> you're also welcome to ask me any questions about it, but I think this would add to the diverse range of skills that's already on the board. And yeah, just adding to that. And that's pretty much it about me. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you, Kate. Thanks very much. OK, next up we have Councillor Nigel Jones from the city of Joondalup. Nigel, can we hear you OK? Can you hear me all right? Yeah, great. We can. Well, as you know, I'm a councillor of the city of Joondalup. I've been a councillor for eight years now. In that time, I've built up a good relationship with the community and also with the uh, Wanneroo councillors. I've been a member of the uh, Wanneroo Business Association for two years and been a regular attendee of the Joondalup Business Association for eight years. So in that time, I think I've built up uh, a decent relationship with the president, Steve, and the staff, Eleanor and uh, Amy. So I think that's important moving forward. More, more so, I think you'll know that I'm one of the most regular attendees of the events, the networking events, and also the workshops, which have been great. Um, now, what I'd like to bring as a committee member is, is building on what's also already been famous, uh, famously done by people before. And one of the examples I've done is recently I initiated a, a meeting with Steve and also the president of the JBA and the state manager for National Australia Bank and the national manager for the National Australia Bank to work together and collaborate and maybe even get some sponsorship. So it's, it's all about doing things. Um, and and as, a, as a committee member, I want to be approachable and available to any member so I can relay your concerns and, and, and thoughts through to the committee so we can get things done. So that's basically why I put my name up to be on the committee is to, to be proactive. I enjoy the people that are there already and I uh, hope I can get your vote on the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nigel. OK, um, 
moving on now, uh, next um, in alphabetical order is Reinhardt, Reinhardt from Perth Grove Finance. Reinhardt, have you got your yep. mic off? Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay, are you ready to go? Yep. All right, off you go, two minutes from now. Hi everyone, uh, so I'm Reinhardt from Perth Grove Finance. Um, we are a mortgage and finance um, broker company, so we do all kinds of finance, uh, home loans, car loans, commercial, any of those kind of things. Um, but I mean, a big thing for me is the same with WBA, is the same thing as a company name, is, is to help Perth grow. And um, the last, you know, I'm a relatively new member to the WBA, but these last few months, um, just getting to really know the community that's built here. It's it's so strong and connected, um, and I just want to help, you know, keep growing that. That's uh, why I put my name to be on the board, is is to see everyone um, prosper and and get closer and, and help each other, you know, our businesses and, and personally grow together. Um, it's just, it's amazing the, the community that, that was already here when I joined. Um, everyone's welcoming. Uh, the committee members, new members. It's just, it's an honor to just be you know, a part of it as, as a member myself, um, even for a short period of time. So I just want to see and help that into the future. As a, a relatively younger person myself, I just offer a bit of a um, different perspective on things, um, but don't don't <laughs> to mistake my age for foolishness. Um, I do, do spend a lot of my time with adults and um, there are people a lot older than me to, to learn. Um, so it's it's nice to be able to be treated as an equal. Um, and yeah, just to, to help and offer my uh, other other skills. Thank you, Reinhardt. OK, uh, moving on, we have uh, Sean is the seventh in line today from Wenlaw. Sean, can we make sure we can hear you OK? Good morning, good morning. Good morning. OK, off we go, Sean. Two minutes. All right, two minutes is going to be fun. Um, OK, morning, everybody. Sean Lawson from Wen Law. We're a family law practice that's been assisting Wanneroo since about 2012, and that's when I joined the WBA through um, my wife, Tanya, and myself. Um, I've been part of it uh, as a finance broker through motivated finance. Um, didn't come for quite a few years apart from the odd sundowner, which you all know I love to attend. Um, but pretty much the last year, I think I've been coming to probably 80% of the events. Um, and I've just really been enjoying it, really enjoying the people, getting to know everybody. Most of you know me by now. And I'll kick straight to the why. The why is I've had 30 years in business. Uh, I was a bank manager for, in banks for 20 years, a finance broker doing business loans for eight years. I don't do that anymore. That's not part of what I'm joining. I've got nothing to do with finance. So I simply do the practice manager work at Wenmore. Um, but I've got a lot of knowledge. Um, been in business basically my entire life as an adult. And that was from small business, from a bank manager angle, from seeing what goes wrong in business, how to help business, and being a business owner as a finance broker and working here at Wen Law with Tanya. So pretty much, I just really enjoyed the crowd. I really enjoyed coming along to all the functions, which I'm going to do regardless. Um, and I just think I've got a lot of knowledge that can help. Um, and now my kids are 21 and 19, and I can actually get along to a few more events instead of running off to do the school runs. I just really enjoy, enjoy the crowd, and I think I've got the knowledge and background to help and everybody knows me I'm really really quiet so I'm happy to do any speaking or anything we've got to do with uh, events that are needed as as uh, might be required if uh, if Steve uh, passes or handballs one off so um, if that means I end up doing something for the WBA I'd love to help hope that's enough yep thank you eight seconds to go brilliant well Perfect. done Sean Okay, and last but not least, um, we have Steve Holler. Steve, can we make sure that you are turned on and ready to go? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Fantastic. Hi, oh, all right, go for it, Steve. Hi, everyone. My name's Steve Waller. Um, I'd say I was relatively young about 30 years ago, so not quite now. Um, back in 2000, a career changed from a full-time job and started an IT business. Um, and then while I was the based in Osmond Park, was the president of the Sterling Business Association and also became the chairman of the building in Belcatta as well for a little while. 
Anyway, history goes, married again, and now uh, live in North River based in Wanneroo. And I've always known of the Wanneroo Business Association, but I've never been part of it. But about a year ago, I decided to join. And <clears throat> I find the energy of the association to be exhilarating. And since I've become a member, I've really enjoyed working with people and also meeting a large number of people as well. Uh, we're an IT business, so we look after anything IT and phone related and mostly looking after smaller the smaller end of town and people working from home. And uh, the reason why I want to uh, come onto the board is because um, of my experience in the SBA and I'm hoping to see if I can add to the skill set on the board. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Well done, everyone. Um, well done, a great, um, a great, a lineup today, I think, and um, I think you all put yourselves over very, very well. So I'm sure everyone's going to have a very hard job in deciding who they're going to vote for at the AGM. Okay, guys, um, we are going to move on to our Q and A session. Um, if you have a question um, for these lovely nominees. Can you please type your question into either the chat box or into the Q&A function on the event? Um, currently, we don't have any, but have no fear, everybody, because I have some up my sleeve. However, it would be great um, if uh, those people here today could get their thinking caps on and start putting some questions into those um, those functions. But while people are doing that and having a think, I'm going to start off uh, with one of um, one of my questions. Um, I'm going to direct this question to three of the nominees today, and I'm going to choose the first three that are on my screen. So uh, Reinhardt, um, I'm going to uh, choose Sean. And I'm going to choose David for this question. OK, so while Amy is um, spotlighting you three for everyone, I'm going to say the question so you can have a think. So um, my question is, what would you say to someone um, who was thinking about joining the WBA? And might have some um, reservations about a few things or they might have heard a few things about the WBA and they're a little bit undecided. What would you say to someone to kind of push them over the edge and say, come on, guys, join the join the WBA? Um, so um, are you ready, Amy? OK, lovely. So all right, guys, so let's direct that firstly to to Reinhardt. OK, can you hear me? Is that all good? Yeah, OK. Um, look, I think a, a, a big thing would just be for me, is, is coming along to one or two of the events uh, at first. Um, a lot of the events are free that the WBA host, and a lot of people tend to be quite sceptical towards things, um, which is is very normal, um, in my opinion. And I would just encourage them that you you get a real understanding the moment you meet the people there, the community, the atmosphere. The second you kind of walk in and talk to people, everyone's so welcoming. It doesn't feel like you're kind of sitting out like a lone little sheep. Um, everyone, there's always somebody trying to, to warm you in. Um, and that's, it's such a good feeling. Um, and that's, you know, just be encouraging to, to come along and, and, and experience that for themselves first more than anything. Um, that's, yeah, that would be, that'd be my answer. Thank you, Reinhardt. I'm going to ask the same question now to David. David, did you want me to repeat the question? Are you OK? Yeah, no, repeat it, please. Repeat it. OK. What would you say to someone who is thinking about joining the WBA and they might be um, needing to that little push over the edge? Um, I think essentially I would explain to them my experience and to how it's you know helped me and my business. Um, and I think the other point in your question was if they've heard negative things about WBA, it's just to point out to them, you know, A, have a look at the website, see what they actually offer, all the events, and maybe do a comparison to the other business associations around. You know, if people have heard negative things, then, you know, the simple question is why do they have over 400 members and the others zip? Um, and 
And so, like I said, you know, go on there, look at the events, look at how it's an organisation that is supportive. And like a lot of other associations, they charge for every event and this, that and the other, where WBA is, you know, it's more reasonable. And, you know, the membership base speaks for itself and encourage them to come along to an event and experience it. Thank you, David. And um, Sean, um, you have the same question. You're OK to answer that one? Yeah, all good. Um, essentially, I'd just be asking them what they're trying to get out of it. Um, I, I'd, I'd tell them about my own experiences, how I've been a member for so long, um, how I've come and gone over the years, but really have always come back to the WBA, um, how I really love the people, generally love the people, and find that um, that if you invest in your business, it's just a little bit of time to get to know other business owners. You never know what you're going to get out of it. You might think it's just a coffee, just to catch up, but you're meeting hundreds of other business owners, depending on how much you come to, who might just have that little idea that's going to help your business. Um, the cost is nominal. It's really the cost is your time. Um, so please, please come along, check it out for yourself. If you've heard something negative, I'd be surprised because I generally don't think there's too much negative to be said not about the WBA at the moment. It's a great, great bunch of people. Um, and, and just invest that little bit of time in your own business um, and, and come along and, and check all the people out and wander around. I'll, I'll help help you walk up to people. As some of you know, I'm more than happy to just stand next to you and go, hey. Um, so if you need some help getting to know people, if you're a little bit quiet or, or shy or not, not, not liking to do that sort of thing, I'll help you. I'll introduce you to people. Um, and it, cause it's really just something that you need to be comfortable doing. There's my other phone. I couldn't, couldn't stop that one. Sorry. Um, and, and just, just invest in yourself and invest. So if you, if you're interested, clearly there's a reason come along, like Reinhardt said, catch up for it with a, with a couple of people and, and just, just enjoy getting around and getting to know people. Thank you very much, Sean. Okay. We have, um, a question here. Um, so um, I'm going to pose this question to, I'm going to pose this question to Kate and I'm going to pose this question to Steve as well. So I'm just ticking you off to make sure I know. <laughs> um, all right, we've got Kate and Steve here. Um, so the question I have for you guys and um, Kate can go first. So what suggestions um, would you have for marketing the WBA um, to audiences who haven't heard of it yet? Um, so obviously, if you're not familiar with marketing, it would be, you know, what what can we put out there um, as a brand or as as a message out to people um, to market the WBA to audiences who haven't actually heard of us yet? Um, so, Kate, have you got any ideas? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you guys already do a pretty good job because I think that a lot of people in the local community know about WBA and also in the business community. Um, I know that just through word of mouth, a lot of people do know um, WBA. Having said that, there is some different like streams for the events and stuff like that, that I think probably could be added to just so that, you know, your local people do know that. So there may be some small businesses that don't know about WBA in Wanneroo. I think most of them probably do, but I think them sort of streams of events and stuff like that will just help that even more. But like I said before, it's actually, from what I've seen, is quite good, but it's just you know, adding to what's already there. I'm forgetting to unmute myself. <laughs> and um, thank you, Kate. And Steve, do you have any um, any marketing suggestions for the WBA to audiences who haven't heard of us? Yeah, look, apart from the great job that you guys already do, because obviously I heard of you and I've heard of you a lot over the over the time. Uh, one is I think something you may already be doing, and that's working with the city to uh, find out who startup business owners are, and and write to them or be talking to them, and uh, you know get them along to some of the workshops or something to help them start up. The other thing is definitely LinkedIn. Um, I use an, a robot tool in LinkedIn to connect to people in Wanneroo and different occupations that, I, that I'm interested in. Um, and that's something I think the WA could, WBA could definitely utilise if you're not already. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, 
I think there is definitely more to explore in some of those platforms for us. OK, that's fantastic. OK, so we're going to um, choose another question here. I do have one specifically for Nige Jones. <laughs> be prepared. I'm sure you're probably going to be prepared for this um, this question, Nige. You might you might expect this question to come up, but I think it's good to address it so that everybody knows um, your answer to the question. So, um, Nige, how will you make sure your role as um, a counsellor at the City of Joondala won't pose a conflict of interest for your work with the WBA? Um, all right. Well, like I said, I've, I've been a counsellor now for eight years and I attend the JBA regularly and also now the Wannery Business Station for the last two years. And in that time, like I said, I've just initiated that uh, meeting with National Australia Bank uh, and liaising through the city of Junip as well and through you guys. And it didn't create a problem and there was a positive outcome. And Steve's still negotiating as we speak with, with the National Australia Bank and hope there's going to be a massive um, bonus for everybody. So, yeah, I mean, I, I understand that the concern, um, but it's it's this process is in place to, to make sure that I'm never going to compromise either the City of Junip or the Wannery Business Association. Does that answer it? <laughs> it does, Nige. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. and there are very strict conflict of interest um, processes in place um, in the rules. So, OK, that was Nige. Fantastic. I will might ask you another question as well, Nige, a little bit later. Um, OK, um, so people don't necessarily know but advocacy um, is a big part of what we do here at the WBA. We work very closely with the city of um, Wanneroo and well not just local government but also state government as well and um, it is something that we could perhaps do better. So um, if anyone would have any suggestions on what we can do at the WBA to better improve um, our work in advocacy um, just have a little think about that. I'm going to pose that question um, to the people that are left. So that would be George. Uh, so advocacy for small businesses to local government, etc. And I'm also going to pose that question to Alice. Do you guys understand that question before I hand over to you two? Yeah. Yeah. OK, let's start with let's start with George. Advocacy. Yeah. How can we do it better? Um, that's a pretty good question. I'm not quite too sure on how I'd do that. Um, my my understanding of advocating is uh, representing. So I obviously want to uh, meet with, uh, try and liaise with as many um, people in that department as possible. Um, maybe do some research into the type of businesses that we don't have on board um, and see if we can try and collaborate and put something out there to invite new businesses into our space that um, makes it a little bit better for our current members to have access to other resources that they don't have access to at the moment. That would probably be one of the things I'd try. Um, second thing I'd do is probably do some research on advocacy and try and find out a few other other avenues that um, I could implement and, and put forward. Uh, that's about it for me, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, George. It is a tricky one and um, we are still working through these uh, these the same issues ourselves. So, um, and uh, Alice, um, how do you think we could advocate for small businesses a little bit better? Um. So the way I see it, I see us as a young immigrants coming to Australia. And I'm, for those who don't know me, I'm actually from Vietnam. And um, one thing that I noticed that, you know, there is a big group of Vietnamese and Asian people um, in the city of Wanneroo or in Perth in general. And surprisingly, not so many people are aware of the WBA, even though it's a well-established organization. So if I am selected as the um, board member, I would love to, you know, um, put um, to be an advocate of the WBA to the minority, uh, the minority group. 
Um, so, uh, you know, I could share some um, events, but because not some people like there's uh, quite a lot of immigrants um, and business owners that are coming to Australia and they feel um, that, you know, they might not belong and they don't speak the same language and that may, might be, you know, um, put them off. So I could advertise, you know, like the WA, BA to um, those people. And there's another way is that I can see that there are more young people that are starting businesses and they need more support and they have different way of communication. So um, they would probably prefer different um, marketing channels like um, Instagram or TikTok. Um, so that might be something that we can do in terms of marketing um, to put our name out there um, so that more people are aware of the um, incredible work that you know the WA, WBA can do for them and for their businesses. Thank you so much, Alice. And we have seen your TikTok uh, not contribution. Not on TikTok yet. <laughs> not on TikTok, or maybe it was uh, your reels. Yeah. Yeah, Instagram. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Um, so I think that's everyone that's had one question. Um, so we do have. Um, just going to um, choose one more question here. Now, um, because everyone has had a go, I'm actually going to open this up to. A, a hand raise so you can literally do this if you feel that you'd like to answer this question okay and this will be the last question for the um for the q a session so don't everyone put your hand up but <laughs> <laughs> otherwise we'll be here all day but no we'll, we'll, that's fine if, if everyone feels they want to answer it um that's fine we will just try and make the answers short and sweet okay one thing that you might think might encourage members, less active members. So we actually have, you know, over 420 members for the WBA, but active members who actually come to events and and join in. And, um, you know, we see on a regular basis, we're looking at probably um, close to 200 that we do see regularly. We actually had a look at the figures recently, but we do have members who who are less active. What is one thing that you might think would encourage those less active members to participate more regularly? And we need these ideas. All right, Councillor Nice Jones has got his hand up. Anyone else? I think, I think it's, a, a, it's a case of just touching base with them, even if it's just a phone call and saying, hey, look, we haven't seen you around for a few months. We just wondered if how you're traveling, is there any way we can help? And, and just show some kind of interest. Uh, and I think that enough will be maybe to get them to come to another event as a starting point. Yeah. Thank you, Nigel. Anyone else? We got uh, Steve, Steve Fowler. Steve, just going to spotlight you a second. All right. Go okay, ahead. very quick one. Um, perhaps give them the opportunity to talk about their business for 30 seconds at one of the events. Oh, yeah, that would uh, definitely probably bring some people running. Very good, Steve. Okay, um, I think I saw Kate with her hand up. Kate, did you have your hand up or? Yeah, I did. did. Um, okay, awesome. I would wonder if, um, which I think I've seen from going to the events, that things like the breakfasts and other sort of events like that tend to get more turnout. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. So I think I think it's kind of, this is a bit controversial, but it's something that could also be played with. I think sometimes when people have to, have food or something like that where it's like a part of it is paid for there is more obligation for someone as a business member to go obviously as small businesses we all have to juggle many things but there's some even if it's a very small amount you know being like oh I paid for breakfast at this event and obviously that won't be all the events there's obviously needs to have like you know the free coffee networking and stuff like that but I think that does help people in their minds to actually oh. get there but yeah that's my yeah Thank you, Kate. Um, we've got uh, George got his hand up. George, Amy's just going to spotlight you a second. Alrighty. Yep, we're we're. Uh, hang on a sec. Yep, we're good. So I've, I've, I think I heard you say there was uh, about two hundred that regularly attend. So yeah. It's about two hundred and fifty. So probably some direct contact to those two hundred and fifty people to ask the questions of why they don't attend and if there's any specific reasons that make it difficult or that they've lost interest or whatever it is that way we can have some actual 
information to work with, um, that there may be some um, common traits about why the a vast majority aren't turning up. And I think with that information, then we could probably have some constructive uh, approach to implement some ideas because we actually know the reasons for people mm. not attending. So that would probably be an approach I'd take. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great, George. Thank you. Thanks. Sometimes you sort of feel a bit too afraid to ask, but I think it's uh, <laughs> it's worth facing those uh, those things head on. Um, does anyone else have an answer to that question? Uh, I can see a couple here. So let's go with Alice first. Um, <laughs> Alice. Just a small suggestion. I think what we could do with our booking system is that it um, would just, uh, this is just from personal experience. Every time I book an event uh, with the WBI, so I got an email confirmation, but it's there's no option for me to add that like to my calendar automatically with the location and the time of the meeting. So even though I wanted to attend the meeting, but it's not in my calendar, so I sometimes I forgot, and that probably the reason why some people couldn't make it. So um, I was just thinking, you know, just a small improvement in the booking system really helps to increase the number of um, attendees. Yeah, thank you, Alice. That that could definitely be a reason. And um, David, yeah, did you have an answer to that one? Uh, yeah. Um... One thought that's been going through my mind is that if we could have events that have like a main draw card, like before you did something with like Mark McGowan and things like that, if we could do more of those, that would, and then, you know, sort of like really market that to the people that aren't coming and just to get more people coming back to actually see the advantage of that. And you know, perhaps you know, draw card events might be a way of, you know, rekindling interest in the WBA by people that have drifted off. Yeah, absolutely. And things like breakfasts and some of those larger events, yeah, could be a bit yeah. of a gateway in for people. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, I have actually um, noticed there is a couple of questions in the Q and A. So um, I lied to you; that wasn't the last question. <laughs> um, so I'm going to limit these though. Um, I'm going to pick uh, pick one, and so I think this is a great one. Um, and I'm going to um, direct this one to Sean, to Reinhardt. Those were the two. I didn't actually manage to have a chance. So we'll just leave it yet yeah, to Sean and Reinhardt. OK, so what do you see as the most important qualities or skills that a successful board member should possess? And do you embody these qualities or how might you embody these qualities? It's a good question. Um, OK, let's go with Sean first. Sean? Oh, that's going to be rough. I'm going to talk about my own skill set. Um, yeah, look, I think um, you need to be ethical. Uh, if you're on a board, you need to have some understanding of how a board works. Uh, it would be helpful, not, not useful, but ethics are very important. Um, and then it's the rest of the skills that we all, uh, I guess, putting forward. Um, ability to understand how business works, ability to deal with people and communicate easily and and frequently and as as needed by the board um, and to fill any sort of role that, that you need. Um, I think that um, do I embody what a board member needs to be? I think so. I was a bank manager. I used to lend a personal authority of 11 million. I was a reasonably responsible person. Um, I understand business as much as you possibly can. Um, I just love people and talking to people. And I think that's a really big part about being a board member is putting forward the WBA as um, advocating like you, like you were talking about before and I, I'm a genuine advocate for the WBA because I just really in, in, enjoy the, the team and enjoy what it's trying to achieve and I think it's trying to achieve um, knowledge, information, anything to, to help a business improve and grow um, is what the WBA is trying to achieve as well as advocating and, and going along with other um, alliances. So um, I think that um, I'm a really quiet person, not, so therefore um, that 
that helps me uh, in, do, in doing whatever WA will need and I have the business background to go with it. So um, sorry that's I'm describing myself to some extent, but I do think that um, some of those features are important. Thank you, Sean. Well, that was the idea. I'm sure um, we want to hear how you can fit into those qualities. So that's great. And um, Reinhardt, over to you. It's a tough one to follow up, but um, no, I, I think a big thing is, as Sean said, is is being ethical. Um, you you want to be in this board for the right reasons. You don't want to do it just for for self promotion or, or any of those kind of things. You want to genuinely help your community, um, and that's and that's one thing I definitely I'd, I'd like to say I embody is um, is helping other people. Um, is is that care factor? I think another important point is to having adaptability. The big thing with a lot of places is sometimes there's a need that needs to be filled and, and obviously there's different people for different jobs, but being able to also kind of adjust and, and shift or, or willing to break out of your normal habits to be able to, to fit where people need you. Um, I'd like to think I'm still quite adaptable um, is, where, is where I could help in, in that sense. And just a big thing about communication. You, you not only want communication within the board with each other, but also with members, with people outside of that who aren't members, um, just to kind of explain truly and clearly where you, you see this and advocate for the WBA. Um, it's you know, a beautiful organization that's helping lots of people. And uh, I think I embody that that um, core essence of, of wanting to promote and help people and grow um, all together. And that's that's a big thing that, that every member of the board should have because um, everyone wants to succeed. And yeah, that's I think that's yeah a bit of my self ramble, but um, yeah, I think that's important things. Thank you very much, Reinhardt. Um, thank you, everyone. Today, I think we'll leave the questions there. Um, we do have a bit of a general one um, that's not directed at the board members, but um, somebody did ask. Um, when Stephen, Andy and Neve, um, their terms will end on the board. Um, and I assume also um, Russell, because he's also still on the board. So um, terms are for two years, um, Stephen. So that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that would mean that um, you guys are in the first year of your of your term and that you would um, get reviewed next year. Is that right, Stephen? Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, myself and, and Andy in, in particular, uh, we were um, voted in last year. Um, we will have another um, year of that two year term, as, as you've just said, Al. Um, with Scott, Scott did have um, uh, a one year term initially. Um, that was because Scott came on um, when another board member uh, had to step back. So there's normally two years. Yeah. And okay. obviously with, as you said, with Russell, with, with Agatha uh, and Neve, Agatha as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, they've, Agatha. they've all got uh, another year to go. OK, so before I hand back to Stephen um, to close our event today, um, I just wanted to remind everyone that our AGM is on next week, 20th, Thursday um, of the 20th of July. It's going to be held at the Bankshire Room again at City of Wanneroo Civic Centre. So please jump on and register for that event if you haven't already. We do need a quorum of people to vote for uh, for the new nominees onto the board. Um, if you can't attend and you'd still like to vote, there is a way of doing that and that's via a proxy form. So um, if you would really like to vote and you can't make it to the AGM, let Amy or myself know and we can get one of those forms to you and you can give that to somebody else who will be attending to vote on your behalf. Um, okay, um, Stephen, over to you. Well, Thank you, um, everyone, again, for your time today, for um, for your pictures. And um, I mean, we had some brilliant questions. We had some absolutely fantastic answers. Um, I believe that's going to give everyone here today and, and those who are going to review the recording to help them decide um, who they would like to vote for at the AGM um, 
I'm finding it so, so difficult. There's so many fantastic, um, amazing people who have nominated this year. Um, so obviously I've still got to try and work that out. Um, but please do, as El said, buy your tickets for the AGM. Um, just talk about it at the network and get, make sure that the message gets around to, to come along and vote for you. Um, and we will see you all, if not before, um, at the AGM um, on the 20th of July. So good luck, everyone. Please do cast your votes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. We will all see you soon. Great job today. Thank see you. you. Thanks, Dave. Bye. Bye. Take care.